back at the movies that made it big in 2018, you can't help but notice that what is old is new again. Mm -hmm. Case in point, A Star is Born. Yes. And another example is uh, the sequel to Mary Poppins, which is still killing it in the box office. And looking at 2019, well, that trend's going to continue. Rob Rector is a film critic and founder of the Revival House Theater in Milton. He joins us as he does every year at On this time day. of the year. On the day, On yeah, the day. you were here exactly a year ago talking about the films of 2018. Yes. Moving forward to 2019. Yeah, and you're absolutely correct. We have, I believe it's 14 sequels and 15 reboots or reimaginings or whatever you want to call them that are on the slate for 2019. Disney alone is uh, is especially going green this year because they're recycling three of their animated films into live action or CGI movies which we'll get ready to well, see here. Lion King is one of those, right? Lion King will be one of them. Tell me yeah. about Lion King. Uh, Lion King, directed by John Favreau, who did uh, the same sort of treatment on The Jungle Book back in 2016. Uh, he's taking this on. Now it's, they call this live action, but as you can see from the trailers, not a lot of live things here that yeah. I can see, but, mm -hmm. but it's still it's a CGI uh, interpretation of the, the Lion King film, which was released in animated form so many years ago. When you, when you say CGI? Computer generated imagery. Gotcha. Uh, Sorry, yeah. movie geek terms. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and, and you know, and we were talking ahead of time. I was telling you, my twenty-something kids are yeah. so excited about this because they were toddlers when this came out. Big nostalgia factor on this one. James Earl Jones, the voice of Mufasa. Yeah. So it's uh, it's expected to be one of the bigger ones of of twenty nineteen. Now, when you were here last year, you were talking about Avengers: Infinity Wars. Yes, I and was. And we all went and saw it. And we all went and sobbed <laughs> when our well, I shouldn't get No, don't anyway, say anything. In case, <laughs> spoiler alert in case anyone didn't see it. But there's another Avengers. There coming is the conclusion of Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 1, which started back with uh, Iron Man and, and Captain America and so on and so forth. This is the, the concluding chapter of it, uh, Avengers Endgame, uh, which brings that whole, that whole origin story to a close and starts the next phase of the Marvel franchise. But yes, mm. it's it's going to be, uh, I, I think it'll make a few dollars on its you opening think? Maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. <laughs> Here and there. I'll be if one. they try to squeeze them out. <laughs> uh, cats? Cats, yes. The uh, fourth or fifth highest grossing musical of all time on Broadway is now getting the big screen treatment. Oh my goodness. Uh, big name cast. Um, on the one, the one wild card though is that they've they've cast uh, someone with no acting experience in the lead, and I want to make sure I get her name right. It's uh, Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift. Uh, I think uh, yeah. I've heard of her. Swift. I just I hope the poor girl can sing because, <laughs> because there's a too. lot of musical numbers in it. So. Um, Fingers crossed for her. All right, let's talk about You Are My Friend. You're my friend, too. Aww. <laughs> so, yes, uh, 2018 was a big year for documentaries. The RBG, which is the Ruth Bader Ginsburg movie, and, and Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is a documentary on Fred Rogers. Now he gets the dramatic treatment with the cinematic equivalent to Mr. Rogers, Tom Hanks, who is playing Fred Rogers in a in a period of his life there too? And uh, how could you go wrong with that combination? Just just bring a box of Kleenex <laughs> and just buy your ticket because you know it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a weeper, but we're all gonna go see it. Yep. Okay, you've had some highest points uh, high points coming up. Is there anything in particular you're, you're really looking forward to? So I am a lifelong devotee of I'm a Star Wars nerd. Okay. Mm. And this year marks the end of the kind of Skywalker saga that started back in 1977 with George Lucas. Uh, this marks the end. Episode nine comes out in December, uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to that one. But there's also some other ones. That's all the way in December. So in between, there is uh, Jordan Peele who directed 2017's Get Out, uh, one of my favorite films of that year. He's got a new film called Us, they just dropped a trailer like a, on Christmas Day, I believe, um, that looks really, really good. And then in August, they have, uh, we have the 9th or 10th, depending upon whether you see Kill Bill 1 and 2 as two movies or one, but it's the 9th or 10th film from Quentin Tarantino called Once Upon a Time in America with 
Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt Ooh. as uh, as leads in that one. So. So oh, yeah. speaking of revivals, ah. we got to talk. Yeah, we See got a theme here, that. Revival House. <laughs> yeah. You guys got some great flicks coming up. Yeah, we uh, we have a, a lot of, of revival films that we're getting ready to show, too. Um, speaking of superheroes, we, we're going to screen Batman this summer, the 19... 19- 89 Nine. version of it, the Tim Burton, that's celebrating its 30th year. No! Right? <laughs> right? I know. Feeling old. Um, wow. So, so we're screening that. We've got, uh, for the kids, we're doing a, a labyrinth, a full audience participation of the David Bowie, Jim Henson. Oh, my yes. Burton, Labyrinth. Uh, we've got, but we also have a lot of things for local filmmakers, too. So, uh, starting next month, we do. It was called the seven. It was called the eight percent. Now it's the seven percent because it's based on the number of films directed by females in Hollywood. So we change that number every year. Regardless, uh, we show a female-directed film, and then we highlight films from local female filmmakers as well during that. And then we'll have uh, several other opportunities for local filmmakers to enter into it to have have their film screened on the big screen to win prizes and money hmm. so it's it's a there are a lot of opportunities for local filmmakers to to have a chance to to feel like stars for a day wow how so about that? yeah how about that always good to have you rob always good we'll to be see here. you next year thank you yes 2020? absolutely 2020 <laughs> i'll be here all right